Good morning, ladies, and a few gentlemen that I have. This is Suzanne Light. You're not going to see my face in this video because I've not had a shower yet. I just felt the need to share a little bit more. I've shared things about this before, but I wanted to share more about what I'm doing in scripture journaling. This book, I think, came from maybe Home Goods TJ Maxx, $7.99. I love these books because you can actually fold them back while you're writing. I bought several of these different places. Um, but back at the beginning of the year, when I always like to evaluate and think about, you know, what I've done, what I'm doing. Um, God impressed me this year, and I think I have shared this with y'all, I'm not sure, but he, sh he impressed with me to write. And some of you hate to write, and this may not be your thing, but what I started doing, I'm sitting here with a shout out over me, but that's okay. What, um, I think because maybe because 2020 was going to be so crazy. I started looking up certain scriptures. So what I did, I took the Bible that I was using. I have several Bibles that I use, but where it said, do not be anxious, Matthew 6, 25, 34. And you can see right here, I said that I recorded it and posted it on YouTube on February the 6th, 1920, 1920, 2020. <laughs> And so I went through and I did the verses 25 to 34, which was pretty long. You said, Suzanne, that's a lot of writing. I can't do that. Well, I just, I, I don't do it all at one setting. Sometimes I do. But a lot of times I'll just do a little bit at a time. So this is a form of Christ, uh, scripture journaling just that I've done by taking sections in the Bible, dead to sin, alive to God. You can see that I posted that to YouTube in February also. Well, just the last few weeks, I thought I want to do just maybe some different type of scripture journaling. I really like this too. And I probably will start putting on here what Bible. I have a Quest Study Bible, an ESV, a Tony Evans a life application so it just depends and I can't tell you which ones this came out of sometimes when I knew that I was going to use it as a lesson an actual and that's what these were were lessons there would be times I'm gonna get over here to see there would be times where I would want to know more or I'd want confirmation on something that I was writing on and um, I would look up stuff even on the internet. You could do that also. Or you could use a couple of different study Bibles to get, you know. The thing is not quantity as much as it is quality in God's Word. Now let me say that again. I think God wants... Um, quality out of us not how many scriptures we read and study but what we do study and read that we really are enhanced by it so and i was i was doing this now you can see here this might have been one of the very places that i did this i don't know i don't remember that's my wash machine turning off. I don't remember exactly, but you can see that I came back in here and wrote even more in red. So I added a new note to it. So that's, and also right here. Oh, that was, okay. That is, that's a commentary from Spurgeon. I had looked up a commentary on the first verse of Psalms 91. And then you can see where I added that. So, if you wanted to do various study Bibles, and y'all, you can look up all kinds of versions. And then I started doing a little bit more with color, just to break it up a little bit, and and would be writing in red. So you can tell that I was doing a lot of study and looking a lot of different places, and then just using a lot of different inks 
and just you know maybe making it a little bit more interesting so the all this bo book has been done since the first of the year and um so i thought about doing some scripture writing so what i did and this is a small i was actually gonna um cut this out and i made it very small this is a scripture writing plan for june and let me see if i can even see i can't even see but it's one that i found on pinterest and it's called dealing with the devil <laughs> and i was like eh, i don't know if i want to do 30 days of scripture writing about the devil but it's been really interesting and i'm not necessarily stroking and saying i've got to do this every day because there's sometimes i just have crazy days but i'm saying i'm going to do the whole month and right now i'm i'm pretty current i think i'm actually ahead right now i mean i know this is not june but i'm talking about on the days so what i started and, and, and let's just stop here and say we're talking a study bible or either a study bible own bible gateway different all different kind of commentaries a book i just found this after i've marked several things out but just when i'd mess up i'd just mark it out dollar general i love the gel pens from dollar general they don't last a terribly long time but they're a dollar and i like using different colors a pair of scissors i bought this at Hobby Lobby on sale the other day. So when I go to the boys, they, when I study my Bible, when keeping my grandsons, they always say I'm doing my homework. <laughs> you can just put whatever you need in here. I'm going to show you a little bit in a few minutes, but I mean, that's what it takes. It can take one ink pen. You can go to Dollar General and get you some gel pens. You can look on Pinterest and here's one for july 2020 on spiritual warfare so i've been kind of looking at topics rather than the month so i have bookmarked a lot and i know i'm going to do spiritual warfare so when you do a reading plan like this particular one this is uh the june scripture writing plan dealing with the devil when you do this then you are going to do verses that are pertinent to the topic that you're doing a scripture journaling um, plan with. Now what I did here, I said day one, and in this one I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna, I am doing the ESV, here is my ESV study Bible. As you can see, it has a lot of content in it. I like this one because it is deeper. It is more, I mean, it is a thick, thick Bible. I got these tabs on Etsy's. I really like these tabs. Uh, it's a cumbersome Bible to carry to church. So I don't carry it to church because it's a study Bible. But I like it because it goes into such detail on the verses. It gives charts. And I, and, and I actually put this chart in my scripture writing. So that's what I'm using now. Uh, like I said, I have several others. And actually, if you really want to take a lot of time with it, you could write your verses down and you could write a little bit from the different study Bibles that you have. I've done that before. But right now, I'm just doing my ESV. And these are not necessarily teaching. I might teach some of it, but it's shorter clips. Now, let's just take the first one, Genesis 3, 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say ye shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Well, that's five verses that we're going to cover there. Now, nowhere does it tell you in this that you have to do all of this that I'm doing. This is Suzanne Light style because I love to take a verse apart and look at the true meaning and what my study Bible says it is. Let's see what they say it. I do the dots there. The speaking serpent is suddenly introduced for the first time into the story with very minimum detail about 
you know, where he came from. Nothing is mentioned about its origin other than it is one of the beasts of the field. Although the serpent is eventually portrayed as God's enemy, the initial introduction is full of ambiguity. And I said, mm, I think I know what ambiguity means, but let me look that up. The quality of being open to more than one interpretation. <clears throat> so, you see what I did there? I had a word that I, I, I think I know what it means, but let's, let's look it up. So, see what you're doing. You are dissecting the verses. Don't you think God had rather us dissect than to say, I'm going to read a chapter a day? There's nothing wrong with reading a chapter a day. If that works for you, that's wonderful. But there comes a time, well, no, I'm just going to say at this time in my life, because this is, this is about what I'm doing, not what's required of anybody. But this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this, and I'm taking it apart. So then I thought, well, on day two, let's, let's dress it up a little bit. And that's where I'm going to show you. I have so many stickers, guys. These were a dollar at the Dollar Tree this week. And then I found a page downstairs. If I was to show y'all all the scrapbooking supplies I have, y'all would say that's a sin. It probably is. But I just thought about these numbers, and I started just pulling out stuff. So see, this is simple stuff. This is Hobby Lobby. This is stuff that I've got. And you know what? If you didn't have one sticker number sheet, you just write it out. You write it out. But I wanted to make it kind of interesting. So day two of dealing with the devil is from Job. Oh, Lord, we know Job. And, you know, it's always interesting, too, what Job went through. And this was really interesting to take apart the verses and how the whole Job situation came about. Well, you see, that was only two verses. So, when I've got time, I'll sit down, I'll do three or four days at a time, or whatever, you know, I want to do. And then there may be days that I don't get to do it at all. Now, my hands hurt. I have an issue going on right now with my hands. They're hurting. I think it's probably neuropathy. But I still am going to write. Even if you just sit down and write out the verses and then study the study part. And, you know, I'll say here, I haven't said this in a long time, but if you long to have a study Bible and you can't afford a study Bible, there's just no way in your budget that you can get a study Bible. If you will send me an email, I will get you one. I buy used Quest study Bibles, which I think is one of the best ones for people that are just kind of getting into studying the scripture or you could have been a Christian for years. It's just a very simple, well, it's what I read the whole Bible through a few years ago, and I'm in love with it. And I say this for people who absolutely cannot afford one. Don't be ashamed. It's just between me and you. Nobody will ever know. But if you desire a study Bible, you send me an email, and I will get you one. And then later down the road, when your finances are better, you can bless somebody with something else. So I only say this when it's embedded into it because I just don't want to, I mean, it takes money, of course. And then I have to wait till I find a good used one because I'm not going to send you a bad one. But you just let me know. Because a study Bible makes all the difference in the world in studying the Word of God. It truly does. So day two, dealing with the devil. Day three, day four, now over here, I said, I'm a little bored. I think I'm going to start using some different color ink again. <laughs> and sometimes when I'm doing, when I'm going into the study part, it will refer, when I, when I do this part out of the study Bible, it will refer to yet more scriptures. And it just depends on how deep I want to get into it. Now like this one. It says this, and this is before I had my correction tape out. You see, I just marked it out. This is the first of four times that Jesus predicts his arrest and crucifixion. And I listed those verses. I just wasn't in the mood to write those verses all out, but I've got it there to study to go back. Now, 
I'm trying to think about what I'm writing when I do it, but there's times that I go back and really just look over it and read it out loud that I'm not writing. So the color pens are strictly, well, and the reason I also wanted to do, I'm doing where Jesus speaks like the red letter Bibles. So the red, red is only used from this point on for when Jesus is actually speaking. So that lets me know. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What does it mean to take up his cross? Crucifixion is a shocking metaphor for discipleship. A disciple must de deny himself, die to self-will, take up his cross, embrace God's will, no matter the cost, and follow Christ. I mean, we hear preachers say all the time to take up the cross, take up the cross, take up the cross. What does that mean? Well, here's what it means. And that's the reason my style of scripture journaling, which is also you know, just a deeper method of like verse mapping is what some people call it. And people will even take each word apart. Now, I'll have to tell you that kind of, that kind of, <clears throat> I don't work good with taking each word apart. I'd rather take the verse personally just for me. Okay, so now here I'm on day five, day six, still writing in red. I've decided at this point, just red. And, uh, you know, I got a new pack, a couple of new packs this week. And these are really smooth writing. They don't last a real long time, but, you know, for a dollar, come on, come on, dollar. Day six, day seven. I'm just having a great time with this. Because now we've moved on to Luke. Here we're in Acts, where it talks about Anais and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira. And you can see I'm just writing in purple just because I want to. My verses are always in black, unless Jesus is speaking and that part's in red. But I always distinguish my verses, and then I come down here with little bullet points. And then, this is one of the times where, um, in the study Bible portion, it did list a verse. And I wanted that verse to be in there. It says, lying is a characteristic of Satan. Well, where does it say that in the Bible? I mean, I know that's true. You know that's true. But I wanted it. So I did look that verse up. Did it in a different color. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil. And I didn't put all of it. He does not speak the truth because there is no truth in him. You remember that when he's whispering in your ear and telling you that you're not good enough to do anything, that you're ugly, that you're fat, that you have no friends, because all of that's a lie. All of it's a lie. And the same thing here. And it's exactly the opposite characteristic of God who cannot lie. I wanted to put that verse in there, Hebrews 6, 10. It is impossible for God to lie. So that's the times I told you. Sometimes I do go back in there and I do put the extra verse. It's time consuming, guys. I understand that many of you do not have a lot of time, but you could do a verse a day. You could do it on your break at work instead of being on Facebook. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, let me see. Point at you, and all four of these are pointing back at me, okay? And then day 11, you can see I'm using some different stickers, different things. First, day 12, 13. And I just, I love the headers. I, I just, it grabs me. A lot of y'all are very creative. And, okay, I know your the dryer has stopped. <laughs> Um, a lot of y'all are creating and do all this beautiful lettering. I have bought, you would not believe how many lettering books I have bought and still haven't practiced it. So I want to do some of the beautiful lettering. So um, here's day 14. You say, Suzanne, that's a lot of writing. It is. It is. So then you can tell here that I got this new pack. <laughs> And it had a pink in it. I'm not sure I'll be using pink. It actually shows up better on this camera than it does here. It's a little bright. But hey, it's fun. And it should be. And see, by now we're in 2 Corinthians 12. Still talking about dealing with the devils. It's 30 days of dealing with the devil. 
Verse 7, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. That's Paul. Paul's the one that had the thorn in the flesh. And then this talks about the different things that the thorn could be based on what the ESV Bible says and thinks. So, that was the chart I was telling you about, the different verses. And then it says, the weakness of God, 1 Corinthians one twenty five, is stronger than man. Even the weakness of God, if you compare weaknesses to strengths, the weakness of God is stronger than man. 1 Corinthians one twenty seven. God chose what is weak to change the strong. <laughs> No, to shame the strong. Sorry, shame the strong. So you can see that I've got day 16 set up. Uh, like I said, I'm not necessarily doing it by days, but I think it's great. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, um, share with you a, um, one of my subscribers. Barbara Parker is from West Virginia, and she's a sweet lady, and I think we could be sisters. Uh, definitely could be, definitely be great f friends because she is so much like me. Not that she looks like me, but she, uh, she takes pictures of her house. It looks like my house, just so much. And so she has started a private group. You can see there's 147 members in it, but it's Bible time with friends. And so I asked her this morning when I knew that I was going to do this video, if she would mind me sharing this with y'all. And she said, absolutely. But it's called set your mind or it's called Bible times with friends. And what she's going to do, let me actually go to that page. Hold on. I probably should have brought my iPad in here so it would have been bigger. But here it is. It's a private group. You have to ask. And, and don't even ask to join if you're not interested in doing scripture journaling. But these lists here, I'm still going to be pulling things up from Pinterest. But I'm also going to be doing with uh, Barbara's group. And like this morning, she put, good morning, y'all. Today's reading is John 19, August 19, scripture writing. And so she shows where she has read it. And then she's got her page where she has written her notes. Now, I imagine I didn't try to read this, but um, I don't know. She may be writing her thoughts down on it. She may be writing stuff from the study Bible. It just works when you do what works for you. But it is a commitment to read the Word of God every day. And it is structure, and we need structure. Uh, here is Irene um, Willingham, another great subscriber of mine. And this looks like this is Irene's. Um, yeah, look how she's doing hers. So she's got a book set up. So that's awesome. Yeah. Scripture writing. So she's written it down. So it looks like she's just written it down. So see, I do a little bit more detail. But you see how she's got, let's see if we can see what this is. What Irene has done. Yeah, she's putting like, she's, oh, okay. She has listed all of her scriptures on a calendar. So that she knows every day what she is to read. Okay, I like that. And then she's put some things up here that is from that scripture. And then she marks it off as she reads it. That's great. That is such a visual. And I am a very visual person. Irene has been a friend of mine oh, for a long time. She was probably one of my earliest followers. And um, then, okay. So then Barbara puts on our August Bible reading scripture writing plans and tells what it is there it is so if you want to join this group 
I'm going to do it, and I'm going to probably do other groups as well, or, or do other scriptures. I'm kind of going to do my own thing too, but I would highly suggest, especially if you have limited time, to limit yourself to something daily. I have more time because I'm retired. And some of this material I want to teach also. And I will also be going back and doing more of the taking the scriptures apart. I like to sit down and just teach the pure word of God. Some of you like it. Some of you don't. Sometimes I get a lot less views on my Bible lessons than I do on anything else. But you know what? That's what this world is about. Uh, I may get 2,000 on one video and get 400 on a Bible lesson. But the 200, the two or 300 that listen to it is exactly who's supposed to. And see, the beautiful thing about YouTube is that it stays there. So see, the word never grows old. It never gets out of season. So it doesn't matter if I did a lesson in 2018 and somebody just watches it in 2020. It can bless them just as much. So I'm looking forward to doing the one on spiritual warfare. I'm also going to do probably starting in September with them. I may do different books. I may do just a, a little notebook just for Barbara's part. And I may just write the scriptures on her group and then just read it and not do all this research. That's a good idea, Suzanne. I think I'll keep doing research on different ones. And so that I can keep up with Barbara's group and Irene's group. Is, and to um, to write that scripture every day, but maybe not do all the extensive research. And that way I'll be pulling from different groups. But I'm really enjoying this, guys. I am really enjoying it. You may say, Suzanne, I hate to write. Well, if I had my rathers, I would sit down and type this because I love to type and I'm a great typist. And I just enjoy typing. But God told me at the beginning of the year to write. There's something about taking the time to write the Word of God. And, you know, what you could do, you could just put the, the verse from your daily into your journal. And then you could just write your prayers down below it. Um, I have a prayer journal. But, and I have, I have all kind of, I really am getting back to journaling. Finally, finally, finally. And um, so... You can just write your prayers down. It's just between you and God. Whatever feeds your soul. That's the purpose, guys. It's not to keep a calendar. It's not to say I've written this much. It's what it's going to do to feed your soul. I was listening to a great message um, on podcast this week by Beth Moore about the workings of the Holy Spirit. And she used some of these very scriptures. And the minute she said it, I was like, aha. I just wrote those scriptures out. I know exactly what that says. So it makes it become a part of you. The Bible says that if, you know, if, if, if we abide in him, he abides in us. And it also says study to show yourself approved. And our level of studying is so different at every point in our life. So do what you can. Don't beat yourself up for what you can't do, but praise God for what you can do. My battery's going dead. I love you guys. Until next time, remember John 10.10 10 says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Love you guys. Bye-bye.